anyone who's been a YouTuber long enough knows that one person in the comment section that's always been requesting that one very specific video. Regardless of the fact that no one else seems to care about getting that video, that one person is committed to continue to harass you for the rest of eternity until you make that video. For the last two years, this has been my mom. I honestly can't explain her fascination with Mike Bibby, but it goes way back. And in case you're wondering, she was a fan of Bibby way before he got jacked. Although I'm sure that doesn't hurt. Beyond the fact that I want to give my mom a gift for Mother's Day, Mike is also a player that almost never gets talked about anymore, so from my perspective, he's truly underrated, and his career is definitely worth shining a light on. So how good was Mike Bibby really? Well let's start by taking it back to the beginning of his career. In the 1998 NBA Draft, Mike Bibby was selected with a second overall pick by the Vancouver Grizzlies. There were high hopes for the 6'1 point guard, who was heading to a new expansion team who naturally was one of the worst teams in the entire NBA. It was going to take a lot more than just Bibby in order to make the Grizzlies into a decent team. Despite the franchise continuing to struggle, Mike had a solid debut season, averaging 13.2 points, 6.5 assists, and 1.6 steals on 43% shooting. It's worth noting that this season was league-wide the lowest scoring season in modern NBA history. So if his rookie season took place in any other era, his numbers would have looked even better. His performance that debut season was good enough for him to be selected on the NBA's all-rookie team. He was able to achieve all of this with his solid face-up game, excellent ball handling, and solid court vision. The following season, his game took a big leap as he improved his scoring and assists, averaging 14.5 points, 8.1 assists, and 1.6 steals on 44.5% shooting. He was also quickly becoming a strong threat from three-point range, as he started his career only shooting 20% from that distance, but by his fifth year in the league, he was shooting a lethal 41% from three-point range. The numbers looked good, and his solid play on the court was getting noticed, but after three years, the Grizzlies roster overall was still absolutely terrible, winning only 53 games and losing 161 over those first few seasons with Bibby. The Vancouver Grizzlies organization was then moving to Memphis, and along with that, they felt it was time to shake things up, so they traded Mike Bibby to the Sacramento Kings for a package involving Jason Williams. His surroundings had changed immediately. Bibby was going from one of the worst teams in the league to a serious title contender. The 23-year-old fit right in, and quickly became one of the leaders of that elite and deep Kings roster. He was also able to play less minutes now and reserve himself for the playoffs due to his backup being Bobby Jackson, who was consistently a sixth man of the year candidate. The trio of Chris Webber, Peja Stojakovic, and Mike Bibby led the Kings to a league-best 61-21 record. They easily eliminated the Utah Jazz and the Dallas Mavericks in the first two rounds, which set them up for a seven-game series in the Western Conference Finals with the defending champion and their rival, the Los Angeles Lakers. This would go on to be one of the most famous playoff series in NBA history, for a lot of good reasons, but also some terrible reasons that have been well documented. Bibby was a force and came up clutch throughout that series, taking on a heavier load of 44 minutes per game, and in that time, he averaged 22.7 points, 4.4 assists, and 2 steals on 45% shooting. This also included the game-winning shot of the crucial fifth game of the series. If it wasn't for that corrupt referee scandal, there's a strong likelihood that Mike Bibby and the Kings are the 2002 NBA champions. They certainly would have destroyed the New Jersey Nets in the finals if they had got past the Lakers. Although Bibby's game would continue to improve in the next few years, unfortunately, this 2002 series was the closest he would ever come to winning an NBA championship. They would make the playoffs for the next four years straight with Bibby being one of their leaders. Arguably the best year of his career came in the 05-06 season where he put up 21.1 points and 5.4 assists on 43% shooting. He also shot 39% from three point range and 85% from the free throw line. As the Kings window was beginning to close, they traded Bibby during the 2008 season to the Atlanta Hawks. He had a couple good seasons there, and the Hawks made the playoffs a couple times, but his decline started soon thereafter, and he finished out his career as a member of the Wizards, Knicks, and Heat. So just how good was Mike Bibby really? Well, he was a pretty good scorer and a pretty good facilitator, and one of the big game performers of that time. He never made an all-star team, but I would argue that he was certainly an all-star caliber player for a few years. But the Western Conference was extremely loaded with amazing point guards in those seasons, so I know that definitely contributed to keeping him out. He was never on a championship team, although he should have been, 
and instead, he's remembered as one of the better players on one of the greatest teams to never win an NBA championship. Let me know in the comments section how good Mike Bibby was in your own words. Happy Mother's Day, Mom, and to all the moms out there. Thanks for watching as always. Make sure to like and subscribe for more NBA content, and I'll see you guys in the next video.